Hello, cousins. Welcome to SAS Mess, our spirituality and support symposium. Think morning witchy chats around a warm campfire. The recording has started, and by participating in SAS, you agree to read and accept the terms of engagement, which we will post in the chat. We ask that you mute during the recording for clarity during the meeting and for the afterplay. We will now get started with some announcements. Hello everyone, I'm Maria. I am cleaning my house, but I want to come on and do the announcements and listen in uh, to the SAS today. So we have um, our autumnal convergence coming up next weekend. And so we will not have SAS mass next Sunday. We usually take one year, oh, oh one year. <laughs> We usually take one uh, SAS mass off when we um, when we have the autumnal convergence. Um, and so we haven't, uh, we've tried in the past to do like a hybrid virtual in-person model for different things. And we haven't quite perfected that yet. So um, it's best uh, when we're here so we can all focus together. And then when, when we do the in-person stuff, we can kind of all focus there. And so... We will not have SAS mass next Sunday, um, and then we'll resume in October. And what's really exciting about uh, the first Sunday in October is we're going to open it up to the witches that have joined us in the app that may not be members. Um, they are in the courtyard, been interacting over there. And so um, back... Uh, Several months ago, maybe, I don't even remember when we changed uh, SAS to be like a member only meeting, just uh, because that felt kind of most aligned with kind of the conversations that were going on. But we're opening it back up. Um, and so if anyone wants to, anyone watching the replay on the YouTube channel, um, community.brightanddark.org, um, all of us are already in there in the app and it's free to join um, and you'll be in our courtyard and then you can join us for these conversations on the first Sunday of every month. For all of the members of Foundations in the Guild, we'll still continue to meet uh, every Sunday. So we'll see how that goes. We're trying it on. We're going to see how it flows um, and, and all of that. Uh, today is the first day of the autumnal um, equinox, equinox, however you say it. Um, and so, yes, change of season. It's officially sweater weather here in New England, um, which uh, I got. Uh, yeah, I love breaking out my hoodie. So I'm excited about that. Um, so happy, happy autumn to everyone in the Northern Hemisphere. Happy to spring. Happy spring for everyone in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, I don't know if we have any Southern Hemisphere witches here today, but shout out to you um, as well. And Roxanne said it's the start of Leo season. Woo so yeah, a lot going on. Clip season, there's a lot going on um, astrologically. And so there's so many witches here today. It's very exciting. Uh, welcome. I know there's at least one of you that's here for the first time. That's your very first meeting. So welcome. I'm happy you made it. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, it's still, it's like, yeah, I still have uh, those summer, that summer weather <laughs> too, at the start of fall. Um, I'm trying to think if, uh, so like I'll open it up if there's anyone else that has any other announcements, but pretty much it's going to be a little bit like quiet-ish um, just because we do have the um, autumnal convergence, which is our annual in-person convergence that happens every year. And we've been doing it in Oregon in the Oregon area because um, that's where our shop is and Kim is our kitchen witch. And so uh, she can bring all the supplies there. Um, of course, we may uh, like look to have more in other parts of the country on other times of the year. Um, and that will be fun um, too. We did have one time a spring convergence in Salem um, and that was really fun. So we will, so that takes place um, starting on Friday officially. 
um, through Monday. And then, um, as you know, as Jen Marie too has shared, um, she has a relocated um, also. And so for those of you following her journey along, um, and so her first day at her new home is officially today. And so just to allow to some like settling in time and adjustment all around. So that's it. Is SAS is now open for discussion. And I'll probably like pop off camera since I have some motivation to keep uh, organizing and packing. I'll go ahead and jump in here. <laughs> um, I just want to check in with everybody because I know personally for me with most recent eclipse and then this change in seasons, I have been completely exhausted and just so tired as I'm going into these changes. So I just wanted to check in to see how everybody else is doing as well during this time and just get a pulse on everything that's going on. If anyone wants to share. Everybody's quiet today. I'll share. I'm right next to a road though, so I don't know how easy it is for you guys to hear me. Um, I'm out gathering dirt from a few of my favorite places um, and for the convergence. Oh, there's looking for an opening in this bush um, so I can get back to my car. But uh, so I decided to make it just like a few different of my favorite places. And I stopped to get at this little coffee shop called Magic Waffle <laughs> that happens to be right next to like this awesome tree. Uh, every time I go here, uh, I just look at this tree <laughs> and my partner will be like, do I need to worry about this tree? <laughs> um, because it's just so beautiful. Like the branches are like all the way right down here. So cool. Um, I experienced the opposite uh, during this time of year. And pretty much ever since I joined Bright and Dark is when I kind of realized that. Because um, I wasn't attuned to the seasons at all. <laughs> like, and I was like, oh, wow, this is interesting that other people experience this. So I feel like I have a lot of energy this time of year. Um, and then when I went to that coffee shop, they the guy in there was very cool and he offered me their signature magic latte. So I was like, yeah, today's very magical. <laughs> it's very good. Um, and so I'm just doing a bunch of stuff like all the time right now. Um, and I feel good about it. Over the summer, I was doing a lot of stuff too, but I was exhausted <laughs> during the summer. Um, but I'm also in Florida. So not quite the Southern hemisphere, but like close enough to just be so hot all the time <laughs> um and now it's finally like it's 86 de degrees today but it's like there's a breeze and this is the hottest part of the day pretty much so uh it's actually very nice outside um and it's feeling like a very like magical like launch pad uh to start off the uh, my, my flight leaves tomorrow because I'm going there a little early. So I'm super excited about everything. And yeah, I'm getting a ton done in addition to like uh, preparing my house for the my new cat that's going to be here in the mid-October. So yay. That's really it. That was just like an update, really. But um, yeah, I'm just going to let uh, take you guys with me on my little adventure to all the different trees that I have uh, made magical connections with and I'm going to gather a little dirt from all of them in the neighborhood so cool go ahead Maria 
That's awesome, Ezra. I love that. And that uh, I did see the tree in the background. It's very cool. <clears throat> and I love uh, how your partner said that. It was funny. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I it's like I do around the season change. I do kind of get a little bit of energy. To, so during the transition into like summer, you know, it was more kind of about a little bit of local traveling, kind of going out um, and working with my body and my brain um, on like leaning into that because um, I can get uh, caught up in like tasks like at home or at work, like I must do this before I can do that. And so I'm like changing my relationship with that a little bit. But um, it's an interesting time for me because I'm in my 40s and I'm feeling the changes in my body combined with um, what's going on like astrologically. And also I've noted the transition from summer to fall. Um, usually I feel like I'm getting like sick. Um with kind of like headaches and um, allergies and being tired, kind of body aches. So that combined with hormonal shifts has been hit me like pretty intensely. Um, and I just feel like um, I'm feeling a little bit better finally, like this week. So that's been kind of nice. But I did in those moments, like choose rest which in the past I wouldn't have chosen rest. So that was kind of just a nice like shift. Um, and I know like, it's interesting, like I'm I know I'm preparing like for hermit mode cause there's like different projects and stuff around the house kind of organizing um, like in kind of preparation to kind of hunker down. Um, and so in the winter, you know, where I'm, am, Indoors more, it will be cold outside. Although I do enjoy like um, winter activities, like snow tubing and stuff. But yeah, so I feel myself, I just feel myself like getting ready for the change more so with the season. Um, I'm kind of similar to like to Ezra. Sometimes I, I, it depends. It depends, uh, you know, of course it all depends. But like sometimes with stuff, stuff going on astrologically, I, I tend to a lot of times kind of feel more neutral about it and I, I don't know if that's just whatever my astrological vibe is or just doing a lot of like intensive shadow work over the last years I don't know but I I do just kind of tend to feel more neutral like I, I tend to just try to lean in and like literally go with the flow um but just be aware being aware of it but this transition from this particular transition of season is um is for my body uh, my body needs lots of support. So that is me. Thank you. And so for those of you kind of newer to SAS, we do have about two hours. Um, so we've been just into 20 minutes and uh, it's okay to like change topic, ask any questions about witchcraft or shadow work, um, whatever you want to bring up. And I know this is posted to the public YouTube. So um, whatever you're comfortable with about, you know, being on camera or off camera, but we do love it when you come on camera um, it just feels like a little bit more engaging, but of course, whatever you're comfortable with. And Isabel, hello. Hi, everyone. Um, I am sorry I'm not in camera today, but I have a wicked flare up. I just don't feel myself. Um, however, I did want to ask because uh, this past week I had to I thought they were very significant dreams, so maybe I I would I would appreciate some input on what they mean, might 
mean? So I think it was Tuesday when I, I dreamt that I went into that white light, like when you die, and it was just super bright. And I saw shadows of people brighter than that bright room. And then that's it. I woke up. But then like three nights after that, I dreamt that I got out of my body and I saw me, in, like I turned around and I saw me in bed. And so I walked like in some hallway through the white light again. But this time, what was very significant is that heading down this room of white light, uh, there were what I would call like souls. There was a person that it's still with was I, I couldn't see their face, but I knew who they were. And I've been doing a lot of shadow work for this one. I've brought it up before. Um, he was this person that I saw there among all these other like souls. I knew it was him and he was the perpetrator of my rape. And I saw him and just seeing him it called him out. And so, oh, but this, so I had an understanding that this place where I was was the netherworld. So not at all what they taught us in Catholic school, like you're burning in hell or anything like that. But that perhaps the worst that happens there is that your soul is bare and naked and everyone sees you for what you've done. And at that moment where like no one spoke, but my presence there looking at him, now it brought him to the light what he's done and everyone could see it. He was exposed. And then I wake up. Um, so I just thought it was a significant dream. I didn't, I just thought that maybe I'm making progress in healing, but nothing more than that. So if, Anybody wants to have an input, I would appreciate it. Hey, Isabel, one thing um, that I have learned through the past um, few years, uh, I dream all the time, every night. It is a space where we do end up processing a lot of things like shadow work wise when we are going into these journeys with shadow work. So you do get that extra like room to process it as well in the dreamscape is what I've found and what I've experienced. And I know that a few other people have experienced as well. Um, another thing, another practice that um, I was taught about was also taking that chance that when you get up and you're remembering your dreams, also tapping into like the feeling signatures in the dreams um, mm -hmm. and seeing what comes up with that, but also not just for you, but for other, not just like other entities or other people that are in your dream, but even like objects in your dream, um, putting yourself in that headspace of them to kind of feel into what are they feeling in that moment or what are you supposed to learn from that person in that moment is kind of what I was one of the things that I was taught and that has helped me with some of my dreams um, that have been more intense or just more of like cryptic and stuff like that and mm -hmm. yes it's definitely going to be um, some like sticky points there because you have been doing shadow work, you have been like deconstructing like a lot of your beliefs that you've grown up with that in the past, it would have been like really scary, but now it's kind of like just interesting and just taking that in and allowing yourself to process that as you need. Yeah, I can see that. Thank you. Yeah, You're welcome. Go ahead, Maria. 
Hi. So are you okay with another way in as well? Oh, absolutely. Thank okay. you. Um, I, it's interesting, like as I become more, oh, there are my other pair of glasses, sorry. <laughs> Look for these. <laughs> and I sat down here, Isabel, you mm. helped me to find my other glasses. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing where finding things, <laughs> discovery. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, the more okay. I, the deeper I get into I don't even know. I mean, how much deeper can you get? But I mean, it just keeps on going, right? Like the more I have a hard time when people ask like for interpretations and the reason why is because I'm not like I, you know, there was a time that, I mean, I'll like, uh, I have every book on the shelf of like, you know, for everything, right? Like different, what this means, what that means. But how I've kind of sh shifted, I guess, is this idea of that I'm not going to get any messages that I can't interpret because they're like my messages. And so even though I, I might not be able to figure it all out in the moment, because in the dreamscape, I'm probably a bit more open and I'm probably connected in a different way to my guides, my higher self, like my soul. Um, and and kind of pulling that information is just because of my, my brain is in a different state. So, um, so I do think like, you know, different signs and synchronicities and symbols and all that. I find it fascinating. I find it in, in tr interesting traditional correspondences for things, but the more I get into it, um, I, I touch, tend to kind of rely on my, my own. And I think I probably do like a combination. So with that said, if I've, it sounds like to me, it sounds like so much was going on in that dream. Like, I feel like you were getting glimpses into what's not seen. Um, I feel like your subconscious was working out some stuff and potentially to like, you know, visitations, um, the way that we can meet up in astral places too is like also different than how we like meet up here. Um, but like specifically, it, it sounded like this kind of, okay, um, a different maybe place in the journey of your healing because you've been doing all the shadow work and being at a different place with it. Um, and so if I'm, you know, if I wait, if I woke up from the dream and I remember it and I feel like there was a lot going on. I, I, I might write it down, but honestly, I I've said it before. Like I, I hate writing things down, but it's like, it's so helpful. Uh, it's so helpful to write things down and the stuff that I did write down that I've dated. I love like looking back. So that's just a side note is it's super awesome. I just don't like it. Um, in like that space, but I'm a dreamer and I like to stay in that place as like long as possible. So anyways, that's another story. But yes, writing it down can be super helpful and dating it. And honestly, like being able to look back, you get so many aha moments from it. But um, I will at, then like, I will ask throughout the day. So like, I'll say, I'll like, just take to take a moment to lie still while I can really still remember everything and just reflect on it a bit. And sometimes just taking that moment and remembering it and using different parts of my brain I will maybe remember more later. Um, so that has been like helpful for me if I if I'm not in a place to write things down. I actually do like using voice notes on my phone. I found that as a great alternative to writing where I can just record a voice memo. It's like a game changer. Um, will I ever go back and listen to them? Maybe some of them, sometimes I do. So, um, but asking throughout the day, like, okay, like, I feel like, you know, I'll, this is like the conversation I'll have with myself and kind of make a declaration that I would like some more information. I would kind of like to have that like aha moment when, you know, you have it and it kind of everything all clicks and all of a sudden, like it just comes to light as you kind of experienced uh, seeing kind of more of a light in your dream. 
And I just try to like engage throughout the day with like, Hey, can I get some more information on this? Like that was pretty intense. Like, and I'll ask for it. So I put that intention to kind of maybe get some more signs and synchronicities and meanings. Um, and sometimes that can happen within a few days. Sometimes like it happens like months later, you know, and you you're talking to someone or you are doing the tarot cards. I mean, there's so like whatever, whatever's however you're interacting and you just kind of get you kind of get that clarity. Um, but so, so it's like, sometimes it's a, it's more of a process than like an immediate, um, an immediate like answer. If you're still like kind of working things out, especially with something like this, where it's more intense and there is lots of layers and there's like multiple, multiple lo levels of, uh, emotional inner work, shadow work, and, you know, making sure too, that like, you're feeling safe enough to like even talk about it or think about it or process it. Right. So it's like, it's a multi like layered thing. Um, so really, and to wrap it up with my ramblings, what I really wanted to say was that um, I would just kind of put intention toward wanting to get more information. And I think that you will, I think that kind of like the dream kind of maybe kicked off a process of like a rabbit hole to go down and that you're, if you want to, that's like an avenue for you to, to go. Did that make any sense? Um, I actually connected with everything. Um, I also don't like writing. I do do it, but I don't like it. Um, and there are, you were spot on. It's like so many dimensions. Like I can talk about it now. By the way, the first time I ever said it was here in bright and dark. And so this is, I found out that there is a layer of me that feels safe here, that I don't feel outside of the group. Now, even within that, there are still layers of me that I'm being very protective about. Within my dream, I woke up feeling fear because now I felt like I was also exposed for exposing it. Um, so, yeah, it, it definitely is a rabbit hole because all week long, it's just been at my mind thinking of, well, what if this, what if that? And, and it's definitely been keeping me busy. I've been drained from that. And I don't want to give it too much power also because I don't want it to drain me. I want it to be coming from a space of light where if I get answers, well, actually, this topic is going to drain me. doesn't mm -hmm. matter what. But um, I guess I'm, I'm, with this, I am starting to be more open to um, maybe just to heal for myself. Yeah. If, if all I get is, is that because this person passed away recently, um, at least I get to you know, get some closure for myself and put it to rest for good. So yeah, thank Ab you. Absolutely. And I love that you brought that up about like feeling drained. Um, because some of, sometimes our social conditioning tells us that we have to like figure this out and solve this problem and like power through it and like get through it. And so I'll share just kind of what I've been doing in case it resonates with you. And of course, like we're human. And so do like, you know, things change and fluctuate. But when I'm dealing with a layer of inner work or shadow work that feels heavy and is feels draining and I'm feeling fear, anxiety, um, those kind of emotions come up. I do kind of heavily rely on not on just like, you know, taking that moment to like, feel, feel what I'm feeling like, and not knowing that I first need to support my body and figure out what I need first to just kind of feel the feelings, like knowing that, okay, like this is coming up am I ready to kind of process this feeling my feelings? Do I feel like I'm in a safe, you know, place to do that? 
and it and sounds like that that's what you've kind of been doing, you mm-hmm. know, w- feeling feeling that and then wanting to, and it is for you, right? Like it this process even if you just kind of continued on and, and did it and, and shared it most as an inner journey, I believe that you will have big shifts with it. Even if you never told anybody, you know, like whatever it is that you feel that you need to do, because there are even just like processing the emotions of it is huge. That's a huge part of it. Um, and so much can just happen from that. So like sitting with yourself, allowing yourself, you know, to feel, to feel just, you know, I'm allowed to feel fear in my body and like the shutter exercise is one tool that you can use um, for that. And you might find other tools, but knowing that, yeah, like I'm feeling drained. And so I switch it to like, I need to support my body and my mind during this time. And so like, what do I need a cup of tea? Do I need to take a nap? Like allowing myself to like, really support myself like be that I you know those memes back that say like especially with an inner child that says like you are the person that would have protected that child or like like uh, those always like hit me and I just feel like yes like I am the person now that is going to nurture like this part of me and and that's what I do in those moments I take that time to be like the nurturer of myself and then when I'm feeling like nurtured, I'm hydrated, I've eaten, I've, you know, feel rested, then I might, you know, ex- feeling like, what do I want to do now? What am I feeling pinged or called to do? Um, and that's when we can bring out kind of the spellcraft side of things, the magical tools, create a working around it if we want to, you know, and we might then start to receive more signs and synchronicities and get more breadcrumbs of information to like, you know, and, and also Isabel just wanted to say like, you're a badass and this is hard work, you know, being like a cycle breaker and, and that type of a thing. And so just holding like all the space for you and thank you for sharing with us. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Ezra has their hand up. Yeah, no, I think everything that you said was great. And I, I had some like questions that you don't have to answer here um but and we'll see if they come up because because they were like flicking like like they were like flickering throughout throughout the conversation um but one of them was how did you feel when you first woke up from the dream uh because I've actually been experiencing with my dreams lately as I pay more attention to them I don't actually remember the whole dream. I just wake up knowing something or feeling something. Um, And that is like the summary (laughs) of the dream for me, um, rather than getting the whole story Um, or I'll get like, or I'll wake up with like a song in my head or a face in my head or something like that. Um, And that kind of feels like my guide saying like, you don't need the whole story this is the feeling signature or the like tidbit of information, like the next clue or something in the scavenger hunt type of thing. Um, So yeah, how did you feel when you woke up from the dream? And then how are you feeling now? We're really, that's it. I I was um, more fascinated with the fact that I I put a face to, in the moment what I thought was the netherworld so I was just fascinated with that because it gave me a different perspective of not seeing it through fear's eyes one and secondly the fact that I exposed them was a a huge step forward of feeling like well maybe not in this lifetime I didn't get to expose you but if if we do have different lives, if we do have under, if we do meet beyond this one, that um, and it's not so much like oh, 
I'm going to make him pay, but everybody does kind of have to be responsible for what they've done here. And it gave me a bit of peace that maybe not here, but somewhere else people will see him for who he was, especially because, and maybe this is too much information, but I found out that as he pa before he passed away, he was known as one of the best rheumatologists uh, by by the community, and they did a lot of. He got a lot of accolades, and and I just couldn't deal with that. Um, I hated that the fact that he was a very beloved, prominent person in his community, and that I didn't get the chance to to face him so being able to expose him gave me a little bit of peace if not you know if it doesn't go beyond anything and there is let's just say there's no afterlife that you never see each other that you never pay for what you did but at least <clears throat> because I'm still in this one that I get to have some peace for me so overall I think the it left me with a sense of peace Thank you for that, for sharing that. I think mm -hmm. from my perspective, like that feels like the point that your guides are trying to make. That's how I would interpret it for myself is to give you reassurance to fascinate you and to offer you some, some peace mm -hmm. about that. So thank well, you thank for you sharing. Extra. Go Thank ahead, you. Stephanie. Thank you. Um, Isabel, that dream was fascinating. And I don't really have a lot to say about, you know, an interpretation of your dream, actually. But your story is really resonating me with me in a different kind of way because I had shared this uh not too long ago that um and it's not the same story as yours this part at all and i don't mean to compare the two um mm -hmm. but of losing somebody or somebody leaving this earth the earth side that um maybe you'd had a really terrible experience with a uh, like an ex of mine um just did recently and uh Watching everybody talk about how great they are and all the wonderful things about them is really hard and launched me into a different space of healing, um, which, you know, of course, there's like every time we think we've worked on something, right? There's more and more and something happens and something changes. And... Um, I have found that that has pushed me more into thinking of how it might be in the afterworld as well. So that is really all that I have to say. Um, just that that your your dream and your story is is really resonating with something and how hard that is and how it changes absolutely everything about your healing process when that person um, is no longer Earthside. I mean, it just changes the perspective so much. So, um, yeah, your dream was really, really interesting. I liked the the brightness of it all. Really speaks to me about shining light on everything. So, and that's really all I have to share. But, um, and I'm going to mute instead of Thank keeping. Thank you, Now, I'm not good at, you know, I never pay attention, so I don't know who's next, but we can definitely change the topic and go on to something that resonates more with everybody. So, but I do appreciate everybody's input. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing, Isabel.
anyone want to share how they, um, if they're doing anything for the equinox or for fall? I maybe I can speak a little bit. Yes, um, hello, welcome. Thank you. Um, uh, on my path, it's been um, it's been some time and in interested um, in all this, and so I um, I did a search and um, I wanted to um, to start well. If you uh, understand what I mean. Um, uh, not do uh, mistakes uh, I uh, do, I don't need to make and uh, start with something that speak for me, not just uh, generality. And so I um, I bought uh, a book about uh, Mabon. Do you want to share anything from the book that you thought was interesting or exciting, or have you not delved into that yet? And don't worry, we all struggle with the buttons coming off mute. And I'm chewing, that's so annoying, sorry. Uh no, it's um, it's because uh, I'm French. Um, English is on my uh, first uh, language, so I um, I'm working in my uh, I'm working on my English uh, by uh, speaking with you. In fact, um, and what I mean, they uh, in the in the book it was uh, written that um, the eight uh, the eight Sabbath. It wasn't the same order for a north um, of uh, planet Earth and uh, south on, of uh, planet Earth. And uh, I found uh, that interesting because um, it means uh, the, the seasons uh, are, uh, are different. And um, when uh, the, the south mass uh, started, you, uh, someone here said as such, and um, it uh, there was an echo uh, in that for me. I mean, uh, before all that, I never, um, it never, it it never came to my mind that uh, seasons could be different um, uh, on the planet um, um, if you live in a different place. Isn't that so fascinating? I found it super yes. fascinating. Yeah. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, it's uh, not so interesting. <clears throat> thank you for being here. I'm super excited that you're here. Um, just, I'm really like really excited, um, but I like, I don't wanna make you feel overwhelmed. <laughs> so I'm holding back like a little bit of my excitement. But yes, like we're so happy that you're here. Um, it's a great place to learn and we're happy to like be supportive of you engaging with the English language. I think that's also awesome. Um, and so, yes, welcome. Um, I'll, I'll kind of share this. Thank see, you. Yes, um, see what rabbit hole that this leads you down. So. From what I know about Mabon is um, it's originally a Welsh uh, holiday, I believe, a Welsh tradition. And there's also like in, in the Welsh tradition, there's also a deity uh, associated. Um, so that's very interesting. And some people, when they get into witchcraft with a new practice, um, they often find a lot of information about pagan traditions, um, Wicca and things like that. And so every, when you're looking into these specific holidays, it's, um, it's interesting to just kind of look at that specific tradition, you know, and see if it resonates with you. Um, and at here at Bright and Dark, we don't 
um, practice or initiate in any one tradition. And so for us, that's why like in general, we can all celebrate the equinox, right? Cause it's a, it's happening in the Northern hemisphere. It's the change of season. Um, and, you know, witchcraft is, con- you know, very closely connected to nature and, and everything really. But, um, and so what's kind of happening, happening seasonally and what are like the, um, what are the energy signatures of like that season feeling into it? And so it's super interesting to kind of just delve into all that for the first time, but I just kind of wanted to highlight that, um, that yes, that uh, every, what, that there are some witches that practice traditionally and there are some that are not. And this um, for you is just like this time of discovery to see kind of really what resonates with you. Uh, But there's like a big wide world out there under the witchcraft umbrella to explore. But thanks for stopping here. Yes, thank you so much. Catherine. Always takes me a hot second to find the buttons. So I'll share what I'm doing for the autumnal equinox. Um, I actually started earlier this week. I literally had food poisoning. So it's literally cleansing from the inside and going outwards as well with shadow work. So it's been very interesting. <laughs> Fascinating week. But what I did was I have um, the last of our summer flowers, which I pulled in for the week. Um, pulling in, of course, the last of the yarrow because I had two blooms this year, which is which is common. And um, like you, kind of cleaning, organizing, Maria, um, got the drawing powder out. So we're going to get rid of some of this energy from the summer, albeit lovely. It's it's different from what's coming for the fall. Um, so yeah, so basically prepping and like you prepping also for um, the time to go a bit more inward. Definitely. Thank you. Stephanie. I have hit I've had a busy um couple of weekends are all based around the autumnal equinox. So last weekend I went to a festival on a, f- a farm not too far from here called Cultivating the Intentional Feminine. Um it was a day of speakers that spoke on um Oh, there was herbalism, there was human design, I'm going down that rabbit hole, uh, not in a culty way, but in the <laughs> just very, very curious way. There was a lot of breath work, it was a beautiful day on a farm with um, all kinds of people and vendors and you know, readings that you could get a massage that you could get. So that was really great. And then yesterday we have, um, every year at the, uh, Equinox, we have Pagan Pride Festival, which is actually a pretty big festival here. So that was another day that I just spent all day. I went with my camp chair and listened to, uh, speakers. There were, um, listen to Sandy Caswell. She's an author. She wrote a book called The Village Witch. She uh, started a lot of uh, organized sort of witchcraft groups here in Rochester in the 60s and 70s. Um, So she was really fascinating to listen to. There was a uh, speaker on teas and there was a speaker on herbalism. And of course I did plenty of shopping. Um, and then this weekend I'll be heading to the convergence. So it's, it's been a big mix of like equinox festivals for me, but also the practical side of, of preparing for the next season, you know, uh, getting my herbs all in order. I hung a whole bunch of stuff yesterday. 
Um, I'm feeling very motivated, you know, to clean things, um, to prepare my inside spaces that I've really neglected um, in order to be outside for the summer. So it's an, I, f I feel really balanced in that way uh, over these couple of weeks where, you know, it, it's a balance of celebration and a, a balance of practicality and preparation. So um, I actually just worked that out out loud, you know, that, <laughs> that I feel balanced in that time period of, you know, the equinox. So this is a little interesting uh light bulb there for myself for a minute. So that's what I've been doing. And I'm going to mute. Actually, since it's quiet, I'll pop back on. I got this little, um, yesterday, a charm casting kit, which was, I've been wanting to build my own kit for what seems like forever now, but I didn't want to just go take all the time to do charm by charm. <laughs> so it's nice to get this little um, kit of really, really cute charms and I can add to them as time goes on so it will uh, become more involved but i don't know if anybody has any experience with that sort of thing there were some classes yesterday on charm casting and bone throwing and uh just different kinds of divina divination that i have previously practiced so um if anybody has any experience with any of those i'd love to hear about it I have had a charm casting reading before and I loved it. Um, so like, have I done any charm casting myself? No, I don't think that I have, but um, yeah, I've had, I've had a maybe two charm casting readings and yeah, I got, it was a great reading. I got like a ton of information. Um, I personally like, those types of divination because I, uh, I lean on the ADHD side of things. And so when you have thousand tabs open at one time, I like like the physical thing to kind of be able to focus on and kind of connect with and interpret. And so I like really having I like, I do, I think it's great. Like, I, I think I really, I wasn't introduced to charm casting until the last couple of years. Um, but I think it's, I think it's awesome. Um, I know, you know, the person that I had the reading from, like, they have a big bag of charms and have been doing it for a while. And so they really have developed, you know, connections with each of the charm and their own kind of interpretation you know, as well as maybe any traditional correspondences, but I always love like the off label, like <laughs> the non-traditional correspondences too that kind of come up and how you just might connect with things in this like roundabout way and how like all those connections get made. Um, I think it's super cool. So I'm excited for you to keep us updated on the journey, Stephanie, if you get, if you get into it more and start reading for yourself or doing it for others. I know in the shop, we have like, uh, I think our divination, was it the box has, sometimes we get like little charms too. So you can always add, look at, look some of your bright and dark boxes. Cause you might be able to add some charms to that bag. <laughs> Stephanie. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really drawn to it because it is more of a practice to me in that the intuitive part of readings right because i have my piles and piles of oracle cards and i love them you know i have a regular practice with that but um i'm heavily dependent still on the interpretations and you know in the books and stuff and i'm finding that with playing with the charm casting um I can lean a little more into the intuitive side of things. Like you mentioned, like 
Um, I, I do it opposite that I do with the cards. Like the cards, I tend to do the read, read what's in the book and then interpret it for myself. Whereas the charm casting, um, I tend, I'm finding because it's only been like 24 hours <laughs> that I've done differently with it, that I um, interpret the symbol first and then look it up if I'm stuck a little bit, you know? So I'm really looking forward to just sort of getting that that exercise and that intuition, intuitive reading part. And I feel like the charm casting allows me um, to do that a little bit more. Love that. Um, I would say I'm interested in uh, it too, in um, your experience, and so if uh, other want to try it because uh, I feel uh, a bit uh, the same about um, about it. Um, oracle or tarot, uh, the fact that there, there is a, um, already a, a meaning um, for each card and it's kind of a closed uh, meaning. Um, it doesn't feel very uh, personal. And uh, from what I understand about magic, it's that it's very uh, it's very personal for um, everyone. It's really uh, each one has uh, its own path and uh, its uh, own um, own way of uh, working uh, on it. And I uh, I end the the speaking. <laughs> Thank you so much. You actually just gave me an idea. So thank you. Put that in my brain bucket for the group. <laughs> Karen, you're next. Um, oh, sorry. Um, I'm actually going back to a topic. So is there anybody else that wanted to talk about the charms? checking in okay um I was kind of fascinated to hear you guys talk about going inward in the winter it's so different than my experience fall and winter are my favorite I mean yeah I have a huge garden in summer and love spring and all that um but I really don't like the heat and I don't like the sun that much um I'm much more about the moon and much more about nighttime and I love snow. <laughs> I love I used to ski so much. And um, so for me, fall is like a breath of fresh air where I get to go out and be active and be excited about life. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, but I also, you know, I, I get the introspective. I just don't think I ever really valued that part of my life. <laughs> Um, but I'm finding now that this is more awareness. I actually am starting a list of things that I'm really excited to do when, you know, it's really cold outside. I've moved into a place where it's going to be much colder, much more snow, like feet apparently. <laughs> and, uh, um, so when we're just kind of huddled in and, uh, I I now have my list of stuff and I'm excited about it. It's it's exciting. Um, yeah, I don't know it's just it's just so different. We're all different. I love it. Have it. If there's a way in, that's great. But this was just a a thing. Sorry, I'm trying to get off. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit to this because definitely when I started this journey, um three years ago, I had very different relationship with each season. Very different. Um, I hate the cold weather. I'm very uncomfortable in the cold. So it has always been a very, winter has always been a hard season for me, no matter where I've lived, whether we've had true winter or not. And so as I started really like 
like connecting more with the earth and really observing like the different energies that come up each season, as well as kind of observing what the animals are doing around me, how the plants are doing, what they're doing around me, that has really changed how I view the seasons and how I view the different like typical um, activities during those seasons that people usually participate in and how I go about each season. And each year it's gotten a little bit clearer for me as the next season comes around. I do like very much like follow whatever season is going on, whether it's really obvious or not. So during the winter, especially, I have to do that in return. I have to slow down. I can't like keep going full speed and join every little thing that's going on. Whereas in the spring, I used to not like spring. But now it has become one of my favorite seasons because it's seen that new growth, those new beginnings, and that like really that energy of, you know, getting ready for everything that has really like started to really speak to me and having that transition and feeling that transition. I know at the beginning, I talked about how tired I've been. And as I've been like listening to everyone, as I like started thinking about each season, I always get really tired as we go into those equinoxes and we have those changes. Um, so I found that really interesting as I have started to like really tap into those things. And it's something that has really become part of my practice is really doing the seasonal work and seeing what that looks like for me um, as the seasons pass. Um, I remember my first year, I really tried to go more with um, the different holidays that came with the seasons and just found that that didn't resonate for me. So it really was more of really seeing what is going on around me in nature that has really like helped me with the changes of seasons, but also has been just more a part of my calling in my path is to really connect with that and feel into that and see what each one brings up and how I start planning out my days, whether it's personal or work, just really tapping into that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I've been experiencing and how things have been as I've taken this path um, as a witch. And it's been really interesting. So that is kind of what I've been experiencing and have experienced. I just have to say, oops, he's forgetting to change this. As a person who has masked and hidden my whole life, it is so awesome that I can say how I feel. And Roxanne, you can say how you feel, and it's different. And I don't feel like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, I should have, like, I, I should have just kept my mouth closed. Like, I have no shame, no regret, no, like, it's just so weird <laughs> it is not my normal this community just really helps me feel so safe like really psychologically safe it's it's amazing because I can still kind of feel like the start of like oh, no no it doesn't matter it's fine <laughs> it's just really really nice so I just um, anyway this felt good I wanted to say so thank you everybody have a wonderful Sunday I'm probably going to take off soon Go ahead, Isabel. 
Thank you. Just to not even elaborate, just to add to what Karen was just saying, um, not only to feel safe, but to be to feel seen, which is very difficult in I want to say that the mundane world where certain aspects of us in determined places have to stay hidden and sometimes for our safety. But um yeah, just to be seen and to know that it is okay that we're all so different, but we're all we all come together here where yeah, safe and seen. So just wanted to add that. Thank you. Um, um, at the start of the of um, this uh, reunion, I thought I wouldn't uh, speak a lot because uh, the the fact that everything is in English, um, I, I, speak, I I'm okay with English, but um, time to get used. But um, thing is, I uh, understand everything everyone is saying. So uh, I, I feel more um, okay to intervene. Um, but what um, Karen and uh, Isabel, that's what, uh, what they just said, um, I can speak about my own, uh, my own experience um, in the way that I'm, um, I'm just saying I'm part of a religious community. So there, uh, there are a bit of that. And um, at start, I, I thought that um, everyone in this was a bit like the same, same beliefs, same way of um, seeking. And um, the more I uh, learned to uh, know people, the more I realized that uh, it's not like that at all. And um, I know uh, that uh, my interest for uh, witchcraft would wouldn't be um, well um, accepted they they wouldn't uh, say to me uh, you do something bad you leave but um, they wouldn't understand and i think they wouldn't be um, able to understand in some way and um, so there, there is uh, this part uh, this uh, difficulty on this side and uh, on the other side, um, there is my friends. Um, uh, they 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 are all uh, with a neurodiversity, um, ADHD, uh, hyper sensibilities, um, autism. And, uh there is a lot but they all have um they all had uh, quite quite a bad um experiences with um with people who aren't um full uh, scientific scientists uh, all this and they um and so they are quite uh, scared uh, of it all a bit, I feel. And so it's, um, I can't speak of uh, it with them uh, either. And uh, since my family is part of the religious community too, uh, in the end, um, before um, before today, in fact, we, uh, since it's the first day I'm, uh, I'm here, really the first, uh, you're the only one with uh, whom I can have uh, this kind of uh, converse, co discussing. So uh, yeah, I um, I get the feeling uh, a bit. There is a lot of different way uh, people won't uh, won't get and won't uh, won't be okay with uh, what you do, 
uh, there's uh, the extreme where you will be uh, scared of uh, being hurt, physically hurt, but there is a, a lot of other reaction uh, to that can be uh, diff uh, difficult uh, to um, to process and uh, keep a good relationship with the person. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm struggling to unmute. <laughs> um, phone drama. <laughs> um, I uh, I totally struggled uh with um, also coming from like a a place of like my family wasn't very accepting of uh my witchcraft. Um, it it did drive a pretty big wedge in between us when I got really excited about understanding my practice better and um, I wanted to share it with them and I was excited I was like I'm having all these dreams and like visions and um, you know I, I even asked my dad one time if I could like pull a tarot card for him um, and that that seemed to really make him uncomfortable he was like no 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 thank you um, and uh, eventually it it uh, became a point of uh, contention that they were so afraid for me um, and they were um, like worried about me when I was excited about something and that just really hurt my feelings. Um, so I, I ended up having to uh, take some space from from them because uh, their, their understanding of what I was going through paired with like the way that they taught me to believe things growing up was um, how do I put this? It, it was a uh, It was like stunting my growth in my witchcraft because I was so worried about trying to take care of their feelings and trying to figure out a way to, to explain it that they would understand that I was stopping myself from growing more and exploring more like in my um in my craft, like in my practice and um, leaning fully into who I'm becoming um, rather than trying to uh, make it make sense from where I started um, but there are things that I understood that I was experiencing internally that I may not ever be able to explain to them and that that kind of actually gave me some peace of like it's okay that we understand things differently but I have to do things that are authentic to me um, in, in order to feel good about my life and focus on what I'm struggling with and uh, also focus on relationships that were supportive to me rather than trying to make relationships that weren't supportive into supportive relationships, which was really hard because I, I care a lot about the people that I know and have known. And um, I always was the person who was like playing like lifeguard in my life, trying to like save everybody and take people along with me and was like, we can all, you know, do this together. I'm like such an idealist, <laughs> but um, I've, I've allowed myself to hold my idealism and believe in myself while letting go of trying to convince other people to be happy and and also understanding that where they are is sacred how they feel and what they believe is sacred um it's I don't know if you guys can hear Persephone in the background she's tearing up a box right now um <laughs> uh 
but understanding that people like like when 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 Jen Marie helped me understand that other people being right where they are on their path um is just as important as where I am and that uh if if I believe be, because I do I believe that um no one is better than anybody else and so me trying to save other people was me saying i know better than you which was exactly the problem that i had with them trying to control me and my experience and so um like being okay with people and sometimes some people need struggle like it's what they desire is to like struggle or be sad or be scared because it validates something for them it it uh it it's doing something for them even if it makes me uncomfortable to watch them struggle yeah that's uh that's my two cents thank you so much for sharing uh virginie Go ahead, Mumble Fairy. Sorry, doing this from my phone and trying to do the buttons. It was <laughs> not cooperating. Um, Ocean, thank you for sharing that. And thank you, Virginia, for sharing that. I, I, oops, I kind of had an experience when I started practicing last fall and I, um, I uh, too offered to do a reading for one of my siblings and we were raised uh, really religious in a Christian household. And I wasn't trying to like convert them. I just was like, it was a full moon in October and I just really wanted them to like engage with me in my practice because I just really adore my sisters and I just wanted to share that closeness with them. And one of my sisters was open to it, but didn't I would say wouldn't necessarily believe in it. And then my other sister was like, oh no, 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 I can't do that. That I can't be around tarot. They, they, that, that just feels wrong to me. And it was like, I was a little sad um, about it because I, you know, I just wanted to share it with them. I wasn't expecting them to stop being the religions that they are. I just thought that that we would be, it would just be a nice connection point. So it was, um, it was difficult for me, but I, I've definitely learned a lot through Bright and Dark about meeting people where they're at and, you know, like not trying so hard to be accepted and just learning to accept myself and, and being here, just finding so much connection and acceptance here has just really meant the world to me. So I appreciate everything everyone shared and thank you, everybody. And that was all I had. So funny little story. I have these like sticky things because I have some gnats that are invading a plant and I just got my hair cut in it. So I cut my hair and then, you know, you're a witch when you're like, well, what do you do with the hair? Like you don't immediately throw it in the trash. What can I do with this? <laughs> uh, I don't know. So um, I just wanted to also say not just that, but yeah, I just love this conversation. And I think it's like so important to have, you know, conversations like these and 
you know, kind of makes me think about like the kind of deconstructing and the shadow work of like acceptance um, and like what acceptance means to me, um, you know, from like friends and family, especially when maybe our beliefs or our activities <laughs> don't align. Um, and, you know, one thing that I just kind of think about is one, like feeling grateful that I was have been in spaces uh, or through sheer stubbornness, so grateful for my own stubbornness that I wanted to just kind of, I don't know, think like outside the box of maybe what my family's religion was. And, you know, that sometimes I just think when, when you're taught and when you believe that something's bad is going to happen to you for thinking a certain way, like that's very scary if you believe that, right? And just respecting that that sometimes is that belief. And in that way, I'm able like to have compassion, but also a little bit of like, um, just releasing, um, yeah, like it's really, I guess when I think about it, kind of like that, just that control, um, you know, and is there a way that I can, if I choose to still have those people in my life, you know, what does that look like um, with that kind of respect of their beliefs and, and my own? But yeah, I think it's a fast and I think this is such an important um, topic and I'm happy it came up today. Ocean. You can tell me what to do with my hair. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I love that you brought up the plants and the gnats because actually, if you um, spread out that hair and like um, just put like it around your plant, it can not only um, like help with that issue, but it will also give your plants nitrogen, which is good for them. It's okay. like a way of connecting to your plants. And I just wanted to share that because- that was a fun thing I learned. Awesome. That's what we're going to do right now. Share some nitrogen with the plants. Thanks, Ocean. You're welcome. And I feel bad about killing the gnats. You know, I do. But sometimes these are the hard things that happen. <laughs> And I really hope my boyfriend sees the hair on the plants and has this like this moment of what's going on here. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to add that. I have a question if it feels aligned for anyone to answer. I um, I was never really into astrology previously, and I was always kind of like, eh, I don't really believe in that. And then probably the last few months or so, I've just been like paying attention to more astrology, TikTok, and like I downloaded that Chani app that we all talked about previously. And I've just been like kind of noticing where things are sinking with that and even without even looking at it, just feeling a certain way and then being like, oh, I've had this notification and then I'm checking it out. And so I was just wondering if anyone else found themselves, you know, more drawn to astrology or um, have seen where people have mentioned things and those have like corresponded with how you've been feeling. I know Ezra mentioned recently, you know, has anyone synchronicities recently I thought that would be an interesting subject to explore if anyone has anything to share there I 
Yes. Maria. Oh, thank you. Um, so I did, I have a hard time. I don't have a hard time. I don't know if I've ever put any effort or like, it just seems like I, fi I think when I initially, I have to feel into it more. Like when I think about astrology, there's some, it's like so vast. And so I feel like that's kind of part of why I'm resistant to like looking into it. Cause I just feel like, I don't know anything. It seems like there's so much to know, but I loved the Chani app. I thought it was in a way for me to engage with it. And there was a lot of great info. And I will say what I especially loved first, I always heard people talk about their, obviously their sun sign, which I know a lot about that, but not so much the moon sign or the rising sign and there's other signs. And when I learned and read about what my moon sign and my rising sign was, I was like, oh my gosh, so much makes sense now. <laughs> because It was like, I finally got more of like this complete picture I feel like then just like, oh, I'm a Pisces and this is that, like, you know, my rising sign is Gemini. And I was like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. Um, and then my moon is in Cancer, just FYI. But, um, and then yes, um, yes, Mumble Fairy, I, I do find myself kind of leaning in and there's like a couple of TikTok uh, followers that I follow. I think as Emily Dexter, I think is one that I really like. I uh, hope I said her name correctly. And um, yes, I find myself doing that more and just kind of wanting to know and, and fe yeah, feeling connected and kind of aligned. Um, and I like almost doing it that way, Mumble Fairy, like kind of, you know, feeling into it and then seeing that what I was feeling was like also kind of what other people were feeling or like what's going on. Cause I'm like, oh, like I'm so, psychic or like or I'm so witchy or like you just feel so like a line like I don't know it just gives me like a little boost of validation sometimes um I do think we're all on some level psychic and intuitive and all of that but I don't know it just gives me like that little bit of uh I, I just I guess I'll see I'll, I'll I feel that boost of connection I think maybe it's the best way to say it uh um, the way that I feel um so yes and I'm always I always like when I'm not into something, because I can deep dive like the best of them, um, I'm always looking for the the people that I feel like are um, who I just want to go to to get my info. And so I love uh, to when people share like who they, what, what apps or who they like listen to to get that info. Thank you. Let's see. I think Roxanne is next. Ocean's next. Ocean Thank is next. You. <laughs> no worries. Um, I've been getting super into astrology. Um, and uh, I just wanted to share that, like, uh, it's it is important to start out with like uh, like your rising and sun and moon signs. Like that's why people, you know, ask about that the most. Um. Or they call it like the big three but what I, what I'm finding as I dive deeper into astrology um oh, hold on my dog is eating something sorry I don't know we we live near a park so sometimes random trash falls into our or flies into our yard and I just, sometimes she gets curious about it um so what what I've found as I dive deeper into astrology is that learning about all the different signs, um, because you know everybody has a full wheel, um, I I've been viewing them as as archetypes rather than like saying like I'm a Pisces because that's my sun sign. Um, more of like going well how how does Piscean energy sort of um, like, what does that look like for me? Like if I were to personify just my sun sign um, and also considering the planets that are in that house, because those kind of affect that and just kind of taking it like step by step. Um, I, I, I feel like um, 
I could probably give a whole talk on this. Um, but uh, my, I guess my main um, like starting uh, information was that uh, like your rising sign is like your gatekeeper. It's like your personable, like the first like impression that people are gonna get from you. It's who they meet when they first meet you. Um, your sun sign is gonna be um, like your, your heart, like who you are authentically. And uh, your moon sign represents your emotions and your more hidden, um, like personal aspects. If if that um, if that's helpful, okay, go ahead, Roxanne. So I just linked a book in the chat. Um, it's called Astrology for Yourself. It's something that um, another person had recommended it to me. Um, cause I was wanting to read my own birth chart some just to get a better understanding, um, as I start to learn more about astrology. And right now I'm really getting into more of like the, um, different signs when they fall on the full moon and new moon. So whether in like a Pisces moon or a Leo new moon. And so that's kind of where I'm starting with all of this. Because yeah, it's been another one of those things. It's like, I really would love to go down like the rabbit hole with this, but I don't have all the time in the world. So I have certain people I follow and then I have like little things here and there. Um, one of the people that I follow, Spirit Daughter, um, they actually have a um, calendar set up with all of like the moon, when the moon enters a different sign, um, when the different like seasons start for the different signs as well that you can like purchase and connect it to your actual like digital calendar. And I found that really interesting because she also has like a little write up about like Leo season for typically and it starts today. So that's something that I've added into my day is having that there so I can kind of look at it and see how that whether it resonates with what I'm going through right now or not because sometimes it doesn't and that's okay so that's kind of what I've been dabbling in with astrology so, yep go ahead Ezra Yeah, I've been getting more and more into it too. And like, uh, it's been really helpful to have Ocean as a friend though, too, because they're like very into it. So I can kind of uh, pick their brain about anything that is like kind of coming up for me on the edge of thing, on like the edge of my brain. Um, because I haven't, you basically, what I do is I intuitively follow my research, like uh, inclinations of the moment like when they come up i'll just be like oh wow i just saw like um a gemini sign because i'm a gemini son and so like one time i had a dream about uh sitting on a bridge like i was a giant and i was just lying on this bridge like it was a hammock and uh the in in the sky the stars spelled out the like two roman numeral two and I was, that's the gemini sign and so at that point i was like okay like it feels like my subconscious wants me to look into my Gem into my Gemini sign. And then since then, if I ever am feeling or uh, a certain way, and then I suddenly start thinking about astrology, I just kind of like let my, I follow my curiosity into that. So like um, at some point I saw like some old fashioned like scales. And so I was like, oh, I wonder where Libra is on my chart. And I went and looked at that and I read about it and then I dropped it and I just like, let it, like, let it resonate where it did. And then I put it away. Um, and so I just kind of participated in that way. And um, slowly I'm learning more and more about it. And I like what Ocean says about the archetypes too, because as I'm learning tarot and being able to connect um, the archetypes in astrology to tarot as well. That's kind of anchoring all of it's like giving me a bunch of different little connections. And so sometimes I'll be like, I'll do a card reading. And especially with the like territorial deck, 
um, that uh, that I got and that we've been using in the lives. Um, for those, they actually come with like astrology uh, notes in them. Like they'll say like this cart resonates with Gemini and Virgo or whatever. Um, and so sometimes I'll notice themes that way as well. Um, and so I'm kind of, like, I'm just practicing being engaged with anything that comes up for me pretty much. And so, and that has been astrology in, in some cases. Uh, and just, I feel like every time I follow my curiosity, I never, I never go astray because that's my intuitive brain going, huh, that's interesting. And whether or not I'm looking at it and saying, wow, I really don't resonate with that for some reason, um, that's still good information. So, yeah. I think it was maybe ocean again. Yeah. Ocean, were you going to go again, or is your hand just still up? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, dog drama. Uh, <laughs> um, I also just wanted to talk about my Saturn return since I'm smack dab in the middle of it, um, and it's just super highlighted for me. Sorry. Um, so uh Saturn returns every 30 years into this into um like your birth sign like your your uh sun sign and Saturn asks uh what have you been believing up to this point and um do you want to continue operating that way based on the results that you've gotten from this uh way of operating or do you want to change them and uh, do something different and unfamiliar and scary and uh, risky almost, uh, which, you know, doing, doing something differently does inherently feel like a risk. Um, but Saturn asks to like, uh, take like, um, like a cold, hard look at your life and how things have been going and the relationships you've cultivated and just everything. And it's um, usually starts, you can, if you're really sensitive, you start feeling the energy around 27. Um, and then it just ramps up from there until Saturn gets there when you're 29, usually. And it stays there until like your 30th birthday is usually when your Saturn return is like over. Um, and so uh, right now I'm currently in the very middle of mine and it's been a really transformative time. It's been me questioning like where, where I am and the things that I used to think that I wanted for my future like all the plans that I had made um it's been a time of uh transforming my relationship with my body and the way that I interact with them it's been transformative for um my relationships too um I I recently uh also went through an uncoupling with my partner or my my ex-partner I guess now um and we've we've remained really good friends um but we both recognize that we're in a place of life where we don't really know ourselves authentically because we're both in a Saturn return right now and we've agreed that it's more healthy for us to work on ourselves and um, 
maintain a friendship um, without any expectations of where that will go, which our relationship had these like heavy expectations of like, well, are we going to get married or what are we going to do? And that just wasn't aligned for me. I'm a, a very free spirit and I, I wasn't ever really sure if marriage was right for me. And now I, I don't think it ever will be because I used to just see it as a safety mechanism, as a way to like, um, as like a, a road to security. But then I realized I didn't want to believe going forward that my security would come from another person or come from a relationship um, in general, uh, which is super scary, especially as like, you know, someone who grew up being conditioned as a woman, somebody who um, is trans and uh, is disabled and doesn't have um, like a, a normal job. Um, but I mean, you know, we're witches, how many of us are able to maintain a normal job? Um, it's, a uh, or, uh, my, sorry, my brain said, or maintain being normal at our job. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, it's, um, it's been very freeing and, um, it's also allowed me to connect more deeply with my magic. I also just in the vein of um, like uh, my relationship with my body, I recently decided to stop consuming cannabis, which was a really big deal for me. Um, I used to, as, as somebody who's disabled with chronic pain, um, who's autistic and struggles socially, uh, I used cannabis for everything. I was, um, uh, I probably smoked every single day for the past at least 10 years. Like, I don't think that there was a time that I really felt like I had to take a tolerance break because I felt like it was my medicine and it was, um, helping me and making me, um, more sociable, more palatable for other people to be around and, making it easier for me to ignore my body so that I could push through and do what I needed to get done. And that just doesn't feel aligned anymore. And um, so I've, I haven't been smoking for about a week now and um, the clarity that's been coming through with my, my uh, higher self and which ironically, right. My higher self. Um, <laughs> uh and also the uh, communication that I'm getting from my body has both been really intense, but really illuminating. It's been um, an incredibly dense, like time for shadow work. It's been a lot of um, like, leaning into like the danger rush where like things feel unsafe but you know that that's like the right thing for you and it feels like aligned for you but it's so unfamiliar that it feels scary and and unsafe um so uh yeah that is all I can think of to share about it thank you for holding space for me and listening to my story I just wanted to give you all a time check. It is now 10 minutes till. So anyone has anything left that they would like to share or anything else, you're still more than welcome to. The hair has been distributed in the plants in case anyone was wondering. Yay! Also, this is random, but I'm going to tell you. So I was thinking about my hair this morning too, because um, I have a pretty big mane. As you can see, most of the time I come here and 
it's just wild. You know, I don't brush it or anything. So I brush it in the shower, but I don't like, anyhow, not the point. So I shed a lot and like, and especially probably in perimenopause, I'm like shedding even more. Maybe I need to talk. I think I need to maybe talk to Stephanie. Um, but, um, I'm just like shedding a lot. And, um, I was thinking just kind of like about how somebody, oh, I was watching a video, how someone is making an offering to the earth. They had pulled over um, by the forest and they were harvesting some plants and um, some feathers like this, these that had been left in the forest. And they, you know, wanted to leave an offering for take, you know, in exchange. And it just got me down this rabbit hole. Like sometimes I get so, sometimes I can get a little bit like, my gosh, like, you know, my hair's everywhere. Like my hair is everywhere in this house. Like it's just everywhere. And I was like, oh, well, look at me. I'm just like, you know, walking down the street, leaving offerings as I go. Because <laughs> like my hair, like my hair is just constantly like falling out. I don't know. It was just like a way, like a different way that I just started thinking about it of like how, you know, that that kind of exchange. And, and is that, you know, like, I don't know, I just feeling into it. I was just thinking about it. It's just a rabbit hole that my brain went down of, of me kind of like just walking around and all the places I go, leaving my hair, you know, like as an offering to wherever, whatever space I have inhabited. Um, and so uh, I never thought about it like intentionally before until like today, but I, as like my hair is that process, I know there's something, I'm going also down like the perimenopause um, rabbit hole too of different ways it can support my body and hair is a big discussion with that and the changes and stuff. So uh, yeah, thanks. Ocean, back to you. Okay, I love that because I've also been um, in in a similar vein of thinking. So like I have a sinus issue that like, um causes me to like overproduce mucus sometimes and sometimes I have to spit and I used to like hate myself for it and feel like really ashamed of it and be like oh my god everybody's gonna think I'm gross um but um I was on a walk one time and um I had to like cough and spit and um I I spit on a tree like on like on the roots like at the base of it and I was like oh it's an offering to the tree because in witchcraft, um, like our hair or um, our bodily fluids um, can be a connection to ourselves, um, to our our magic. Um, <laughs> like uh, like how some people use blood sometimes to like tie you know certain workings to themselves and stuff. And so I was like, oh, this this is me connecting to the trees in a way. Um, it's offering them some of the water from my body, like literally. And so I started thinking of it as as a, a similar thing, and it's uh, helped kind of lessen the the shame and let me lean into the weird about it. So I love that. Go ahead, Maria. Yeah, like I know some witches would like clutch their pearls, you know, thinking that I'm just like leaving my hair around because you know, in some in some belief systems, it's not one that I choose to participate in just because it doesn't feel aligned with me um, in the way that I, my, my perspectives about um, spells like hexes, baneful magic, but like, you know, some people are very protective of their hair clippings, other bodily fluids, even their nail clippings because of how they can be used in different spell crafts and different magics. I, I just don't, um, I choose, I, I, my belief system, my interactions are just different, but I just kind of wanted to like note that, that I know that that can be kind of a part of how some people like interact. But I was like, I, if I did that, I could never like leave a room because like, my, like leaving, like I just said, like, it's constantly like, even just sitting here, like, it's just like, there's this constantly. So like, I'm, you know, I, uh, yes. So I'm choosing to kind of reframe and look at that. Um, yeah. Ocean love to talk about that like more sometimes. So Ezra. I did not 
I do not remember raising my hand. So, but apparently now I have something to say. So I, I love doing that. And I love um, when I was thinking about like what it reminded me of too, is like um, I had this like kind of uh, this like argumentative uh, voice in my head that's just like, is that how it works? Like, you know, like that kind of thing. And, uh, and every time that happens, I've been going like, it is if you believe it is like if that's your intention and like there was a point where uh for the convergence I was I still need to do this but I'm gonna bring just like my regular dishes like because we have to bring our own uh, uh mess kit like of a bowl and plate and fork spoon knife cup that kind of thing um and I was like oh, well, I'll just use one of the regular ones. But then when I bring it back, then how am I going to know like which bowl? And I was, and then my brain went, oh, I mean, you'll know. And then I was just like, but actually, why couldn't I just like bring that bowl back and then like let it spread to the other ones? <laughs> and then I like let the, like the intention. And I was just like, does it work like that? And I was just like, yeah, of course. I believe I'm a connection-based witch and I believe, and I'm an animist as well. So like, I believe that they'll connect with the bowl, you know? And so it was just like, a ma I was like a creating this process of how uh, magic can spread from like one item to the next, if you want it to. And so that kind of reminded me of like, if you wanted, if you want your hair to be a tribute, it is. If you want your hair to be something that people could steal and have power over you than it could be, you know, like that kind of thing. So, um, and I also love like blood magic and I had, I actually did some, um, some spit magic today too. So like, uh, that I like that, that conversation and I feel like anything that you're doing with the intention of it being what you want, it is that thing. So, I have this like thing of like witches gone wild. I don't know. Like, and where, and you know, like <laughs> there was in the nineties, there was this terrible infomercial, like girls gone wild is very not aligned with, with me, but like sometimes the phrases still like pop up. Um, like for example, <laughs> like, you know, for example, like when Oprah said, you get a car and you get a car when I was sprinkling my hair and the plants I was like you get some hair and you get some hair <laughs> like so even though if, just like the phrases will still like stick with me even if I'm like not aligned with the teachings but sometimes the phrasing pops up in my head but um uh, yeah like I was like which has gone wild like we're just like you know like we like you know sharing our spit and our hair and our bodily fluids just all across the land and <laughs> I don't know I'm just I'm kind of joking but also serious and uh that's just where my brain went. I'm just literally sharing the intrusive thoughts. <laughs> my head. So thanks for creating a space for me to do that. <laughs> Roxanne, over to you. I think we're wrapping it up. Yes, we're wrapping it up. And I love that we're ending on that, Maria. That was like perfect. <laughs> But thank you to everyone who joined today and shared. It is much appreciated. We will all see you in two weeks for SAS because we will not be having SAS next week because we will have the convergence going on. But if you're ever having questions or anything, you can always reach support at support at frighteninddark.org. And that's all we have. Have a beautiful day and a wonderful autumnal equinox equinox however you want to say it have a good time <laughs>